Hello, travelers, and welcome to Adventures in Security. Biometrics, one of the three types of authentication factors, is one way to strengthen identity verification using human physical and behavioral characteristics. In this video, we walk through why we need biometrics, how they work, and considerations with planning their implementation. This content is based on an article I wrote for Spiceworks, available at the link in the video description. You can also download the script for this video at a link also in the video description. I won't beat a dead horse, so I will briefly say that passwords are not safe enough to protect classified information and highly categorized systems. Like the other two-factor types, passwords contribute to creating a strong authentication solution. The three factors are Type 1, something you know, passwords, pins, and passphrases. Type 2, something you have, token, certificate, and on -time or one-time password generators. And Type 3, something you are, biometrics, fingerprints, vein patterns, and iris patterns. None of these alone is safe enough. It takes two. Organizations still commonly use passwords, supporting them with Type 2 or Type 3 factors. The factors used depends on the operational environment, budget, and other risk factors. The main advantage of biometrics is the lack of employees needing to carry something to authenticate. They always carry themselves. There's also no risk of token loss or the associated productivity losses of leaving the token at home. Using phone-based one-time password generators does help reduce Type 2 challenges, but when fast access is needed, Biometrics are often a better choice. Like any of the factors, biometrics is not perfect. It has its own set of manageable challenges. First, let's look at error rates. This graph shows that we need to consider three error rates when selecting a biometric solution. The first is type 1, or false rejection rate, FRR. The FRR is the rate at which an authentication system fails to verify the identity of an authorized user. Type 2, the false acceptance rate, FAR, is the rate at which a solution incorrectly verifies the identity of an unauthorized person. The point at which the two rates are the same is the crossover error rate, CER. Good solutions are adjustable moving the error rate along the y-axis as the sensitivity of characteristic identification is adjusted. It might seem that maintaining the CER is best practice, but this isn't always the case. We adjust the sensitivity of an implementation to match the associated risk of unauthorized access to a network or system. For example, we move the sensitivity to the right on the x-axis to protect highly classified information. This results in a higher false rejection rate at which authorized users are not verified. However, we reduce the false acceptance rate, mitigating the risk of a threat actor gaining access. When selecting a solution, an organization must understand the error rates associated with the products assessed. Typically, the higher the cost, the better, and the lower the error rates. One way to quickly assess this is to ask each vendor for their product's CER. Environmental conditions affect the usability, the error rate, of sensors. For example, placing a fingerprint reader on a manufacturing floor might not be a good idea. Solvents, dust, oil, and grease will eventually make the sensors inoperable. In addition, conditions, that, or conditions can alter what is being scanned. According to Abdarahmane Wone et al., features examined under different environmental conditions, other than those present when the person enrolled in the biometric system, appear different to scanners when people were trying to authenticate. User acceptance, including getting management on board, require solutions that do not frustrate users and do not hinder productivity. This is closely related to error and environmental impact management, ensuring users can authenticate when necessary. Another challenge is the possible conflict biometrics might have with cultural norms and beliefs that vary across ethnic groups and countries. Organizations must understand that if any employees, 
and how many employees might have cultural prohibitions against body scanning. Finally, users often resist providing physical characteristic scans, believing they might be stolen and used in malicious ways. Selecting a secure solution, one that stores only values associated with a scanned image, one that supports strong granular access controls, is the first step. This is followed by training users, ensuring they understand the reasons for biometrics and the need for secure management of classified information. Involving users in the solution selection is an excellent way to help avoid user resistance, enabling employees who other employees trust to help select and advocate biometrics use is something to consider. The overall biometrics process includes enrollment and identity verification or authentication. Enrollment places a user's required physical or behavioral characteristics into the system. First, the new employee uses the relevant scanner or other input device and follows the required process to provide his required physical char characteristics. The information entered passes through an algorithm that converts it into a reference template, a value used to compare to future authentication scans. The value is stored in the employee's Active Directory account. The value stored is usually unique to the biometrics algorithm used, and the actual fingerprint, iris pattern, or other pattern is not stored. This does not mean, however, that the theft of the template will not place the victim or the victim's organization at risk of impersonation. Identity verification occurs every time a person seeks resource access. The user scans his characteristic, and the sensor sends the information to the reference template creation algorithm. The new template is sent to the verification algorithm. The verification algorithm retrieves the template stored during enrollment and compares it to the new template. If the two templates statistically match, the user is authenticated. The UK National Cybersecurity Center describes different approaches to attacking biometrics. Presentation attacks use an artifact, something used to mimic the relevant biometric of a user, to authenticate as an enrolled user. This is also known as forgery. Sensor output interception, as it sounds, captures output from the sensor, capturing reference templates and replaying them during an attack. Reference and database vulnerabilities enable unauthorized access to reference templates, also allowing replay attacks, supplying an enrolled reference template with malware when required. The integrity of enrollment is compromised when a threat actor can enroll for an authorized user with a scan of the threat actor instead. The NCSC's example describes an enrollment record that contains the biometrics data of two individuals the authorized user's right hand, and the threat actor's left hand. System attacks include attacks against systems that support biometrics authentication, allowing access to multiple threat vectors. Denial of service attacks can have one of two general benefits to a threat actor. First, the threat actor can simply take down the biometric system, knowing that a backup system does not exist. Second, Suppose a backup system exists, and one should always exist, and has, no, no, has known vulnerabilities. In that case, a threat actor can cause a denial of service for the biometric solution, and then use the vulnerabilities in the backup system to gain access. And finally, insider threats can work alone or in collaboration with outside threat actors to leverage any threat vectors listed or new ones as threat actor creativity allows. Not all biometrics types or solutions are probable targets for all of these threats. However, the team selecting and managing a biometric solution must understand what might be possible and manage the risks. As we walk through the types of biometrics methods, I'll address some things an organization can do to strengthen its biometrics systems. A fingerprint is a collection of papillary ridges on the ends of the fingers and thumbs. As shown here, these ridges help us grasp objects, and their patterns are unique to each individual. 
This is one of the easiest to use, providing fast access to systems like those in nurse stations. They are less useful where fingerprints are subject to environmental contamination, as described earlier. Depending on the solution selected, fingerprints can be easily forged. We can strengthen fingerprint recognition by optical spectrum analysis that identifies special characteristics of the skin. By measuring the capacitance, the conductivity, of what is presented to the scanner, that helps to ensure that an inanimate artifact is not used that an actual person is presenting his or her finger for scanning. And measuring the oxygen level of the finger presented also ensures actual human interaction. Each face has unique, measurable characteristics as shown. Unlike fingerprint recognition, facial scans do not require contact with the sensor, making it more acceptable to those who do not want to touch a public surface. It's also fast, only requiring the user to appear in front of the camera for access. Threat actors can create facial artifacts to fool facial biometrics algorithms, artifacts produced using photos or other media. When evaluating a solution, one of the first things an organization should consider is its ability to fend against presentation attacks, taking steps to ensure the presence of a live human face, not an image, in front of the camera. Technology that assists with this includes 3D scanning and video capture algorithms that detect nodding or blinking. While hand geometry might have been on the market the longest, it has issues. In most cases, the hand is not considered distinctive enough to use for strong authentication. However, hand and finger recognition can be combined with handprint and fingerprint scanning to reduce the possibility of forgery. Hand scanning devices measure an individual's hand length, width, thickness, and surface area, capturing images of both the hand's top and its side. The eye also has unique characteristics, some of which are difficult or impossible to forge. Shown below is the iris, the colored area surrounding the pupil. The iris is as unique as a fingerprint, but it can be forged with its iris artifacts making live eye detection a plus for stronger identity verification. So far, we've looked at only two approaches that require contact with the user, fingerprints and hand-finger structure recognition. But neither has been really intrusive. This changes with retina scanning. The retina, located at the back of the eye, includes a pattern of blood vessels unique to each individual. Scanning the vessels often requires the user to place her forehead on the scanner. It also requires that what might be considered an unwanted invasion of a harmless light beam. Forgery is impractical due to the effort needed to collect enough retinal information for artifact production. Another approach that is nearly impossible to forge is vein recognition, also known as vascular biometrics. It has a very low error rate, is fast, and is increasingly inexpensive, making it a great alternative to fingerprint recognition. Vascular biometrics uses the subcutaneous blood vessels of the hand or finger to scan patterns unique to each person. Behavior recognition is considered a weak solution, but it can be a valuable part of a zero-trust environment, providing periodic user verification without pausing task completion. Keystroke dynamics and voice recognition are two common approaches. With keystroke dynamics, a software agent is installed on each user's device, an agent that senses how the user types, how he moves between keys and his dwell time on each key, that is, how long his finger rests on each key. The user maintains identity, identity verification with a transparent process. Keystroke dynamics can have a high error rate, making it necessary to adjust sensitivity to the point at which there is an acceptable balance between trust and the need for, for re-authentication. Voice recognition uses a person's voice print. Threat actors can easily capture voice samples, patch phrases together if needed, and successfully present a forgery artifact. Again, each biometrics type has its own advantages and disadvantages. This table provides a quick comparison. A presentation attack happens when a threat actor presents a forged artifact to a sensor. 
it's essential to ask the right questions. Know what you are getting.